What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Monday, June 24th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Biden illegally <laughs> diverts billions to build floating wind turbines. Absolutely unbelievable. Next up, in case you think someone has the answer to New York's looming energy disaster, uh, heads up, it's not me. So we'll uh, we'll see who actually does have the answer there. Next up, this one's unbelievable. Almost half of EV owners want to go back to gas cars. Study finds at the next up, Nat Power Marine investing $3.2 billion to establish the, fir- the UK's first commercial electric ship charging network not electric ships electric ship charging, charging network super interesting stool then toss it over to me i will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas market it's been a while since i've been in the seat here i was down in houston last week so a lot happened in the oil and gas markets um to get ourselves caught up with and then we will quickly cover what happened with rig counts and then we'll let you guys get out of here get your monday started as always i am michael tanner joined by Stuart turley where do you want to begin Let's start with our buddy uh, illegal Biden here. What a dope. Biden illegally diverts billions to build floating wind turbines. This one gets me really worked up. In fact, I'm going to do my best Biden imitation I can right now. In the quote out of the article here, it says, what is the INFRA program? Or as Biden would say, what is the... So it is actually the National National Significant Multi-Module Freight and Highway Projects Program. I hope he studies this because I know I'm going to call President Trump when this is over and say, hey, dude, you need to ask him about how he's thieving all this money. Yep. It is unbelievable. Okay, eligible projects, Michael, in a highway system are highway freight, highway bridge, freight, intermodal freight, rail, Oh, all this may a wildlife crossing. Oh, well, all this kind of makes sense to be eligible. What did they spend it on? And it is four hundred and fifty six million dollars in a grant to build the Sears Island floating wind production site has nothing to do with the cars. Cars can't even get to it. This is like stealing from the tag how many potholes are in dallas how many potholes are around i mean some of these these roads need money yeah i mean i think i would be i would i wonder how often this happens in the federal government some you know a a big block of money gets segmented for a specific project through that project's development, they realize there's some other stuff. New budget gets passed, yeah. funds. I mean, this probably has all to do with budgets. Things get shifted around. Super interesting. I mean, here's my thing. As long as this goes towards eliminating the whale population, I'm okay with it. All right. I'm going to get all <laughs> grumpy. I'm going to get all grumpy and everything. No, here. I, 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 here's I, my I thing. I love me the whales, man. You're I know. The... I'm just, obviously everybody knows I'm kidding. It's a long running joke in the show. We get that. We get that. What, what's interesting is the eligible projects that were available underneath this, this INFRA program, which is, I'm all for, I mean, I'm all exactly. for most of this stuff here. This is legitimate. I don't mind paying taxes for safety closed borders, low cost gasoline and some good in kit protecting the environment, roads, good infrastructure. Whales. I'm with you. Yeah, and but hey, let's not do this cuz next we're going to have never mind. have an overpopulation of whales. Who wants that? I do. Now what's next? Let's go to in case you think someone has the answer to New York's looming energy disaster. This one is pretty interesting. In a November 2023 report, NYISO stated deeply buried in page 52 that the DEFRs, DERFs are needed to balance intermittent supply with demand, and those DEFRs. R's must be significant in capacity. These are the dispatchable energy is what these are. So what they're now saying is there's not enough dispatchable energy on this and their topic sentence. 
are concerned that NYISO's presentation at the December Technical Conference overstates the need for dispatchable emissions-free yep. resources, DFERS, uh, and now plays the value of taking steps in the near term to get this grasp. Now, they're going to be dead meat without it, and here's where it gets real funny. They're now saying that they are going to put in natural gas plants that use hydrogen but guess what? There are no hydrogen pipelines in New York. None of their natural gas pipelines will work. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think the answer to the, the, the headline was the New York, you know, independent system operator. Didn't think it was them. Much like, you know, obviously ERCOT's not coming up with this stuff. But it, it, again, it's all about it. it, it at some the, point, the, you, you at some point. The stuff that you talk about, the conspiracies, the political agendas, you start having to believe because you read stuff like this and you're like, well, this doesn't make any sense. Why? Why would you do something like this? Well, the only reason has to be not necessarily for the energy grid, but for some other some something else. And what is that something else? Right. And mandatory demand response is a future speak for turning off all your electric electricity from central Fun. headquarters when the wind isn't blowing. So when they Fun. don't, when they also connect it to a social score is where it gets really bad. You post something bad on X. Boop, your you social bet. score. If we had social scores, Stu, yours would be in the low single digits. Oh, I'd be host. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What's next? Let's go to almost half of EV owner o owners want to go back to gas car study finds. I'm airmailing this to my in-laws because they absolutely are absolutely horrific, buck-eyed, one-eyed mules when it comes to their beliefs in this thing. Nearly half of the Americans of the electric EVs want internal combustion engine model next time they buy a car, according to a new study from McKinsey. Do you know how bad it was for McKinsey to put this out? They, I was going to say, they, McKinsey? They, not only do they drink the Kool-Aid, they pack it with a lot of methanol. I mean, this is like approximately 46% of Americans who own an EV want to go back to the standard for their next purchase, citing inadequate charging infrastructure. Well, our Biden administration spent, what, seven point some odd billion dollars and got zero standard for their affordability. And consumers concerned about EV infrastructure are notable given the slow rollout at the $7.5 billion. The EVA has also finalized strict emission standards for medium and light duty vehicles, while the National Highway Safety Administration is also locked in the fuel economy. Here's where it gets kind of funny. Insurance rates are going to be doubling again on EVs. Tags are now being charged an additional $200 per vehicle, and it's going to go to four. It's going to be doubling next year for EVs. So you're going to be paying because of the gas tax is now missing. Government is going to go after that money somehow, and it's going to go after the EV owners. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> well, I think the problem is like, Tesla's made a great car. Problem is you can't charge it anywhere. Like it's hard to find chargers. You got to install and all this F extra infrastructure at your house. Electricity bill goes up. It's really not environmentally friendly because when you plug into the grid system, we know from studies, it's 98% coal, you know? So it's, it's very interesting. Um, I'm not necessarily shocked by this. I think there's a range issue as well that you have to be Oh, the range fear. You bet. You yeah. bet. Could be very uh, interesting, but doesn't surprise me. I think there's a long way to go. You know, if we could actually use the money that we're diverting into wind farms and actually build up a grid that could necessarily handle more electric vehicles, maybe I'd be all for it. But, you know, at, at this state, no, give me my gas, give me my range. You know, when, you know, when World War Three happens, I need to be able to get in the middle of nowhere quick. Yeah, we know where that is. I, I'll tell you, one of the, the funny things, though, Michael, is... You, you sit back and go, self-driving cars scare me to the standpoint of David Blackman. I want to give a shout out to David Blackman and his sub stack. He put out a health hazard 
with the EV cars that were locking down in the heat and became a heat hazard. They overheated, locking passengers in their cars, and you couldn't get out, and it's been over 100 degrees of heat in Texas. Texas put out a heat warning for your EVs. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like an absolute nightmare. Oof. You know, excuse me while I wrote, I'm breaking a window, dude. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, oh, of course. Yeah. Nat Power. Let's go to the next one. Speaking of some batteries here, you can't buy the UK's fun. I mean, the UK, Germany, California, these people are leading the charge on it in the entertainment. Nat Power Marine investing $3.2 billion to establish the UK's first commercial electric ship charging network. I wonder how much they're going to do better than the Biden administration's $7.5 billion and no chargers. Well, again... It's I think the real question is how much of the global shipping infrastructure or global ships are going to actually be electric and are going to be able to use this network. Now, in their defense, if the answer is there are no ships, but we're preparing for EV ships. Hey, I, that's what you should be doing. That's the we just talked about the problem with EV right. cars right now is there's no infrastructure to charge it. Obviously, ships is a little bit different. So. I am, you know, sometimes you got to put the cart a little bit before the horse because you got to make sure there's something for the horse to put, right. aka the infrastructure. Now, do I think the 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 do I think we're going to have tankers and you know, do I think your Carnival cruise or your Royal Caribbean cruise is going to be an electric ship? No, no, no. It's going to be some form of hybrid here. So right. the real question is is this a wise allocation of money or is this just money being printed and this is what's leading to the inflation that we're already having? The answer, who knows? I'm not sure, but the first Irish sea routes will include Belfast, Hessam, Dublin, and Birkhead, supporting Peel Group's goal for Heisem Port in Lancaster become a net zero port. This would support local in the regional shipping for electric fleet vehicle, I mean, electric okay. boats that way. And this, I still don't see the the marine capabilities are there yet for the batteries. Stefano Somadasi, CEO of Nat Marine Power. This is his quote. Nat Marine or Nat Power Marine is investing in deploying the Larbor's global network of charging points to help solve the quote chicken and the egg conundrum. Facing this industry, shipping lines cannot electrify if their vessels, if charging infrastructure is not available and ports are unable to raise capital for charging infrastructure without certainty of demand from shipping lines. So it is a little chicken in the egg. I use the term cart before horse. The question is, will the ships eventually electrify or it? It, it, it's hard because you, you would like to see more ships going EV so that you know that the right. charging infrastructure is going to be used, but no one's going to build EV ships if there's not charging infrastructure. So there is this weird conglomerate. It'll be interesting to see where it goes, though. I'm glad this is coming from the private industry, though. Allow the private industry to do whatever they want. And so I this isn't government even... spending. So I take back what I said in the in the earlier part of the segment. I am all for private industry doing this. Do I think it's a, maybe a dumb decision? Time will tell. Don't know. I not sure how it's going to play out, but the batteries and insurance are going to be the players there. I still think insurance companies are going to be the ones that shut down the EV business. Tesla will survive. Tesla's the, the big dog. Well, I think Tesla's going to survive, maybe not because of its EV capacity. One, because it actually designs decent cars. And two, I think their their full self-driving is going to be a, a it's huge... It it's is. going to be something that they're going to be able to license very easily, in my opinion, to other to other companies who are looking to do the full self-driving. I, yeah. I I believe that's what's going to happen. I wonder if he's going to be doing self-driving flying ones, flying taxis. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I have to call him. Yeah, get him on speed dial for us. <laughs> so that's it for me. All right, well, we'll go ahead and, and and flip over here and and look at what happened with oil prices on Friday. But before we do that, guys, we got to pay the bills. Again, thanks for checking out energynewsbeat.com. All the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by that website. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. You can hit the description below, find all the links to the articles, timestamps if you want to jump around. Two things I want to highlight real quickly. One, Corporate Data Learning Series is back. I'm going to be hosting it nice. in partnership with W Energy. It's going to be... Uh, uh, 
first two parts are going to be virtual, so go ahead and sign up via the link below. The next two parts, the final two parts, where we actually get to, uh, we don't just get to learn how the sausage is made. We actually get to make a little bit of the sausage and eat no it. No way. Um, That's huge. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to hold it down in Houston. So check out the description below, guys. Corporate Data Linux here is really excited to have that back coming to you in July. And we're also launching a new Substack channel. Not a new channel. It's the Energy News Beat, but it's a new thread called Tomorrow News Today. Um, as you guys listen to this on Monday, we actually record our shows the night before. Haha, <laughs> a little behind the scenes there. So what we're going to be doing is taking the articles that are in this show, actually putting it on Substack in a little write-up so that if you want to hear tom- if you want to hear tomorrow's news today, sign up for that. You'll get an exclusive access to all of these articles prior to the show being run. You can even stay more up to speed with everything we need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Visit our Substack to sign up for that. Or again, everything is in the description below. Let's move over to oil prices, though, guys, because, you know, I think, you know, overall, I mean, before we really, you know, talk about oil prices, obviously, we ended the week above 80. It's helpful to kind of run through what happened on Friday in the global markets. We did see the S&P 500 fairly flat, down about a tenth of a percentage point. NASDAQ down about a quarter of a percentage point. We did see two and 10-year yields tumble up about a tenth of a percentage point, 0.17% for uh, the two year. And the 10 year was actually just a little bit less at 0.14. So two years doing a little bit worse. Dollar index actually spiked about a quarter of a percentage point. Bitcoin did not have a great week. It's down 64,000. I mean, still $64,000 for Bitcoin. And that's down about a quarter of a percentage point. Crude oils, I mentioned, closed that on Friday at 80.73. Looks to open here in, a, in, in about an hour or so. Central time when the market's open here, here on Sunday. Looks to open down 80.59. So it'll be interesting to see kind of that nightward, nightward price action. We, we, we could possibly wake up. And as you listen to this, we could be trading somewhere in the high 79s. Don't be shocked if that's happening. Brent oil was down about a half a percentage point. 85.19 natural gas, mainly off the back of, you know, we, we've had all these extremely bullish bullish heating you know we, we had a extremely hot weekend or forecasted you know weekend coming up obviously dallas is going to be crazy but those have been kind of revised back a little bit so we saw about 1.3 percentage points dropped on that natural gas it's trading two dollars or it ended at two dollars and 70 cents even looks to open about two dollars and 71 cents so a little bit of upward motion there you know i, th- I think the real reason is you know we we, we saw a few things, you know, a few international things happening right now. Right now, one of the reasons is India is beginning to, 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 is, is, is continuing to again, I mean, basically bottom line. And before I explain, India is processing more than 1.3% more crude in May than it did in earlier last year, showing that India does still have a little bit of demand there. But unfortunately we are seeing in the year in, in, in Europe, we saw business growth over the last month, fall precipitously, mainly due to the fact that China came out and said, hey, we're going to not necessarily, you know, much like they're having an EV war with the United States, that same EV war is coming to the Eurozone. So those kind of two polar opposite things, I think are, you know, kind of held back demand forked in some in, in some parts of the world. We have seen a, a little bit of we have we do have seen a little bit of a slowdown both in Ukraine and in in Gaza in terms of both those wars. So geopolitically we still th- see things hanging out. We also did see rig counts. We can go and put this uh chart up here. US drops two rigs again, 588. That that that, that uh, drop of two is week over week. That's still down 94 from June 2023. Canada saw six rig increase and internationally we saw a big white about 25 rigs get taken off the market. So, you know, I think, again, a lot of this, you know, hazy demand forecast that that, that companies are seeing, I think you're seeing that baked into the rig count here. So we'll continue to follow everything. Otherwise, it was a pretty quiet week last week for oil and gas finance. I was down in Houston at Urtech. Great to see everybody down there. We had a great happy hour on Wednesday. Appreciate everybody who came out to that. And 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 really, that, that was it, Stu. We got a big week coming up. I'll be in the chair all this week. So you get a, you know, we'll, we'll give you your Stu reprieve. I appreciate everybody tuning in. And I know our numbers did drop a little bit. So I'm, I'm back now to raise them up. Not just kidding, Stu, but whoa, whoa, what should we be worried about this week? Well, you know, I I would really like to have our listeners reach out as well because there's a $700 billion worth of debt in the banks that I'm wondering why is there not anybody talking about it? The real estate debt for commercial space is really got some banking problems coming up. 
I'm hearing nothing now. All of a sudden it was like, it's going to blow up last week and now nothing. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's like, uh, wow. Where did that one go? <laughs> there's a lot going on and luckily we will be here to cover it. But appreciate it guys with that. We're going to let you get out of here. Start your Monday. We'll be with you all this week. We appreciate you guys hanging with us again on this Monday for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow folks. 